Hello everyone, and welcome to another edition of What's On My Desk. Today we're talking extraordinary pieces once again, and I brought a bunch of turbines. I bought the new titanium offshore turbine from Audemars Piguet. I brought the titanium Panerai Turbion 578, and I brought the Histoire Turbion number no. 4 from Harry Winston, probably the most extraordinary piece out of the three that's here. Now I'm going to go in order here, and I'm going to go in order of turbions. What do I mean by that? Well, this is a single turbion, this is a double turbion, and this is a triple turbion. And I've spoke about this before, but let me just really quick recap for you in regards to the turbion. We all know the turbion is something that Mr. Breguet created for the Queen 200 some years back because her pocket watch kept running slow. It adjusts the mainspring for the effect that gravity has on the movement. Uh, unfortunately, back then it was made for a pocket watch, so the turbine, a single turbine only really works when the turbine cage is perpendicular to the ground as it was meant for a pocket watch. Well, in order to fix that, manufacturers started making double turbines, with, such as this Panerai, with, where the turbine would spin among two axes, and then the triple turbine, which is this Harry Winston, where the turbine spins among all three axes, therefore making the watch accurate regardless of what position the watch is in. I'm going to start with the Audemars Piguet Offshore Turbine in Titanium. Now, in my mind, what makes this particular watch extraordinary? Well, outside of the fact that I'm completely biased for Audemars Piguet and I love the brand, what I love about this watch and the biggest pro for me is its look. It is a sandblasted brushed titanium finish. So if you can see, sort of when I turn the watch to the side, you can sort of see that sandblasted finish and to me it just makes the watch absolutely gorgeous. The fact that it's a sandblasted titanium finish is also a con. Now why is it also a con? Because if you scratch this, refinishing this watch makes it next to impossible by a watchmaker outside of Audemars Piguet. In order to get that sandblast finish onto this titanium, you would really have to strip the entire watch and reblast it again in order to get it back to that particular look. If you're someone like me and sort of sloppy with their watches, this is probably not a watch for you. But if you're someone that wears their watches extremely careful, this is definitely a hell of a pickup because this watch is a hell of a looker. Look at the skeleton movement. I don't know if you can see right through that. Turbian cage is six o'clock, chronograph, ceramic push buttons for the chronograph as well as the crown. It's a typical design of the new offshore line. Manual wind movement and it shows the movement off so well. I mean, look at this machine. This watch is an absolute stunner. The biggest, another big pro for me with this particular watch is its weight. This watch is extremely lightweight. It's extremely comfortable on a wrist. Instead of deploying buckle, it also has the tang buckle, which I absolutely love because the deploying buckles really dig into my wrist. Uh, retail price on this watch, 250000 What do these things trade for? Not much off retail. Expect to pay about $220,000 for this watch on the retail market today. And the reason for that, not very many made. Next, I want to talk about the PAM 578, known as the La Scienziato. I, I'm not, I don't speak Swiss Italian uh, or uh, Swiss, but I'm assuming that means something to do with science, and rightfully so. Look at this beautiful timepiece. And I spoke about Panerai before, how they kind of fell off. Well, this is one of those innovative pieces that's going to keep them going. Note the turbine cage between 10 and 11 as it spins around two axes. Wow. Now, now let me show you the back of this. I mean, this is an incredible machine. This is an in-house movement from Panerai. It is an absolute hell of a machine on your wrist. Large size, 47 millimeters. And here's the biggest kicker about this watch. It weighs roughly about 90 grams. It's a 47 millimeter turbine that weighs 90 grams. It is an absolute feat from Panerai. And the reason I say that is because if you take a typical 47 millimeter watch, especially with a turbine movement in it, a power reserve functionality like this watch has, you're looking at at least 150 to 200 grams, no matter how you make it or what you make it out of. And most likely it will still be made out of titanium. Now, how did these guys achieve, what was the biggest feat with this watch? How did they achieve such a lightweight? Well, they sort of carved the movement out, so to speak. And I'll explain what, I'm, what I mean by that. If you notice, it looks as if somebody went inside the watch and literally carved out this entire watch. And therefore, 
therefore taking out any additional weight. Even the deploying buckle is designed in a way where it's at the bare minimum is sort of like the bones only, therefore again reducing the weight. And the way they achieved it is what's most impressive about, about this particular watch. Imagine taking this watch and slicing it into 0.02 millimeter slices of titanium. Now 0.02 millimeters is it's a hair basically. And they did that by, you know, first putting the design into a CAD machine. They came up with the designs and what they did is they literally sliced these pieces and they stacked this watch up. Imagine starting from the bottom and literally stacking it up piece by piece by piece. I don't know how many thousands of pieces that went in here, but it was sort of like a 3D print process is the best probably way I could explain that is the way they put this watch together. And by doing so, they managed to get rid of any unnecessary weight. The entire watch, the case, the movements, the bridges, the plates, everything is made out of titanium. And that's how they achieved this light weight. And even a bigger feat is the fact that this watch is still waterproof up to 100 meters like any other Panerai. How do you make a watch that's that light, bridges that are so thin that could withstand the type of pressure by submerging a watch under 100 meters of water? To me, that's just mind blowing. If I had to pick a favorite Panerai as of today, this would be it. What is there to say about this watch? Look at it. Just absolutely stunning, absolutely a mechanical feat, and absolutely outstanding. Again, A plus Panerai on this double turret 578. Last but not least, I'm going to talk about something most extraordinary on my desk, and that is the Harry Winston Histoire Turbion. This is number four. Right now they're up to number eight, so this is the sort of the mark, that halfway mark. And uh, let me show you this guy. It looks like that's something out of space. You thought the Panerai Turbion looked funky. Look at this watch. Now, I mentioned this is a triple Turbion, and if you notice closely inside the bubble, and let me show you the bubble kind of sort of sticks out at six o'clock, and if you look inside, the bubble, you will see the tourbillon spinning inside on all three axes. Pretty amazing watch. It's a very futuristic design. You got the time shown at between one and two o'clock. You have the seconds at nine o'clock and the power reserve at four o'clock. The back is actually pretty simple. They don't really show you much to sort of keep it a mystery. Sorry about the sticker in the back, but uh, you know, not much. Just you know, not much on the design on the back. And I think the idea behind this watch is to emphasize on the triple turbine in the front at six o'clock. It's pretty much the entire watch. That's all you see when you put this watch on. Definitely a, a conversation starter. Definitely something that will wow anyone that knows about horology because a triple turbine is about as complicated as you can get. But wait, there's more. I mentioned to you that the turbine mechanism is the most impressive part about this watch and I'll tell you why. The turbine mechanism in this watch is one of the most complex out there. There are three concentric cages, each of which sits at a different angle in relation to the cage outside of it. And if each of which in turn rotates at a different speed. So the outermost cage com completes a revolution every 300 seconds, which is five minutes, and uh, the intermediate cage rotates every 75 seconds. And then the innermost cage will spin once every 45 seconds. So as part of their like push to accuracy, the Hiswa Turbion, they also incorporate the sturdy but light titanium plates and bridges to support the lightweight turb. The turb cage is only 1.5 something or 1.6 grams, which is extremely light. This movement has 340 parts, takes about 160 hours to construct one of these. And that's why they're only making 20 of these pieces. So yes, the most impressive part about this watch is indeed the Turbion. If you had to ask me today what is the most accurate watch out there today, I would probably go with the Histoire Turbion number four that you see here. So guys, we've gone through three different Turbions here. Your not so plain Jane Titanium Sandblasted Finish AP Royal Oak Offshore, the Titanium Turbion, as well as the Harry Winston Histoire Turbion. I think uh, if I had to choose one to wear again, I'm biased, I would probably go with the AP, but either one of these pieces I would be proud to put on my wrist because I think every single one of these watches is absolutely amazing. They're all conversation starters. It's If you're into horology, if you're into the nuts and bolts of these things, the Histoire Turbion as well as this Panerai is definitely something to talk about.
Well, guys, as usual, last but not least, I usually show you what's on my wrist, but today I'm wearing nothing, and the reason for that is because I took this turbine off my wrist. I've been wearing it for a few days. I'm absolutely amazed with it. I'm absolutely impressed with it. It weighs absolutely nothing. It is extremely comfortable on the wrist, and even though I have a small wrist, and we talked about this before, I don't really care. It's, I still feel that it fits me well, so I'm gonna continue wearing this for a few days or until somebody buys it. Thank you once again for joining me on another episode of What's On My Desk. If you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, and I'll see you guys next time for more watch reviews and other videos.